Alan Mercer, woman died from nitrous oxide and immobility, inquest finds. A 24-year-old woman died from long-term complications stemming from her use of nitrous oxide and immobility, a coroner has ruled. Ellen Mercer died from a pulmonary embolism after inhaling two to three big bottles of the substance each day, an inquest heard. This case has highlighted how hugely dangerous it is to use nitrous oxide. A significant cause of her immobility and developing clots, senior coroner Heidi Connor said. The inquest heard a post-mortem examination report found Ms. Mercer's death to have been caused by bilateral pulmonary thromboembolism, deep vein thrombosis, and long-term complications of nitrous oxide use. She was said to have spent the previous two weeks unable to leave her bed because of her abuse of the substance. Ms. Mercer died in February last year after being admitted to hospital with a blister caused by a laughing gas canister stuck to her leg. She had become a habitual user of nitrous oxide and medics who tried to save her reportedly found features of neurological compromise. Subsequent tests showed nitrous oxide inhalation had resulted in Ms. Mercer developing serious circulation and breathing problems. Her fiancé Tom Bailey told that his bubbly, kind and caring partner would get through three to four canisters in one sitting. Her reactions became slower and her face would show discoloring and then it was all a build-up due to the burns. Then she was unable to walk, so then she was unable to go to the toilet, sit there and do all of the laughing gas in one go. It got to the point where she couldn't put it down. She'd have to finish it and then she'd want more. If she didn't have it, she wouldn't be happy without it, he said. Nitrous oxide itself is not addictive, told addiction specialist Chip Summers. He explained, psychologically and emotionally, it could certainly have an addictive trait to it. But you're not going to suffer withdrawal symptoms of a physical nature if you were to suddenly stop taking it. Mr. Summers is calling for better help for habitual users of the drug. He said, we should be taking the use of nitrous oxide extremely seriously as a social problem. Mr. Summers works with people who have stopped using nitrous oxide and said those clients are not problematic in terms of the physical withdrawal, but they are problematic as they're then left with all the unhappiness and dysfunction that probably made them start using something quite mind-altering in the first place, Mr. Summers added. The government last year banned the recreational use of nitrous oxide and dealers can now face up to 14 years in prison. At the time of the student's death possession of laughing gas with the intent of getting high was not illegal. Mr. Bailey said he is in favor of criminalizing users and has spoken out after his fiancé's death to warn others of the drug's severe consequences. But Mr. Summers says he does not think criminalizing is the way to go. These people are not criminals, he said. They are people who need help in criminalizing them and punitive fines and maybe even imprisonment is not going to actually solve the problem. <coughs> Dr. Tijian Esho, TV doctor exchanged Botox for sex with patient. A TV cosmetic doctor gave free Botox to an OnlyFans model in return for sex at his clinic, a medical tribunal has found. Dr. Tijian Esho, who has featured on ITV's This Morning, BBC's Morning Live and E4's Body Fixers, admitted to an improper emotional relationship with the woman, referred to as Patient A, after they exchanged inappropriate sexual messages on Instagram. However, the 42-year-old, who has a host of celebrity clients, told a medical tribunal practitioner service MPTS, hearing that he never had any physical sexual contact with the woman, who provided sex services via OnlyFans and webcams. The MPTS panel, sitting in Manchester, ruled that Dr. Esho did have sexual intercourse with patient A at his clinic in Newcastle upon Tyne in 2021 and administered Botox free of charge. In a message exchanged between the pair in 2019, Dr. Esho appeared to tell her that if they had sex in exchange for a cosmetic treatment he would be breaking the doctor's code. It also ruled that he told her he could get away with giving her Botox in exchange for sexual services. The panel found that the overall conduct of the doctor, also known as Aliawafami Esho, was sexually motivated, but it did not find patient A to be vulnerable because of her profession. The panel also said that at a consultation months before the sexual intercourse, Dr. Esho had stroked the woman's hair and rubbed himself against her after making inappropriate comments about the shape of her bottom.
A year earlier, at another consultation, he made similar remarks to patient A, again rubbing himself against her, the panel determined. The MPTS hearing will reconvene later this month to decide whether Dr. Esho's fitness to practice is impaired because of his misconduct. In October 2022, Dr. Esho had temporary restrictions imposed on his practice while an inquiry was carried out by the General Medical Council. He was not allowed to see female patients without a chaperone or have contact with patients outside a clinical setting. Dr. Esho previously featured on ITV's This Morning program to provide his medical opinion and comment on cosmetic surgery discussions. He was also regularly consulted on Body Fixers for E4, which aired for two seasons in 2016 and 2017, and made appearances on segments of BBC's Morning Live until the summer of 2022. Dr. Esho is the founder of the Esho Clinic, which also has locations in London, Liverpool and Dubai. Former Liverpool star open up on cocaine addiction Former Liverpool and England footballer Danny Murphy has opened up about his use of cocaine after retiring from the sport. The 47-year-old enjoyed a successful career with the Reds, winning the FA Cup and UEFA Cup, before playing for Fulham and Tottenham. The midfielder retired in 2013, having made a total of 417 Premier League appearances, and said he then struggled living without football. After losing the adrenaline of playing the sport at the highest level, he told the Ben Heath podcast that problems became huge and he turned to drugs for escapism. How do I deal with problems when I haven't got football? Because problems when you play football aren't problems. You've got the joy and adrenaline to keep you forward thinking and energetic. When you've got issues, without football these issues become huge, they're like mountains. When you were playing they were fine, because you had finances coming in, you also had support from everyone and anyone, he said, referring to issues such as bills and relationships. He said that while he did not become an alcoholic, he had a bad year with drugs. I had a spell on cocaine and smoking some weed, and the drink. I could live without it for a while. I got to the point where I didn't think I could do things without it, which was nonsense, of course I could, he said. Murphy now works as a regular pundit for BBC Sport, including on highlights show Match of the Day. He said his media work had helped but did not give him the same high as playing professional football. Murphy also said he was amazed by the number of ex-players who have reached out to him with their own struggles after retiring from the game. He said therapy helped him to overcome his addiction and believes his experiences had made him a better son, father and partner. Therapy was good, you've got to be prepared to go deep and not everyone is, because you've got to be in for an emotional roller coaster in therapy, he said. Murphy added that after a year of being in a world of pain, he now realized how lucky he was not to have suffered for longer after speaking with others who had also struggled with drug addictions. People report feeling unwell after visit to farm. A farm where families can feed and cuddle animals has closed to visitors after people reported sickness and diarrhea upon leaving the attraction. Gone Now Farm in Worcestershire said on Wednesday it had decided to close for the remainder of the 2024 farm experience, which was scheduled to run until April 21. The decision was taken after several people reported feeling unwell after visiting the farm. In a statement from the farm on Tuesday, a spokesperson said environmental health officers had diagnosed the sickness outbreak as cryptosporidium, a parasite with the most common symptoms being watery diarrhea, vomiting, stomach pains and fever, according to the NHS. The UK health security agency, UKHSA, advises that you can catch the bug from the feces of an infected animal, for example, by touching a lamb and then putting your hand to your mouth without washing it first. An emailed request for comment about the closure received an automatic response saying, Gone Now Farm 2024 experience is now closed and all future bookings will be refunded as soon as possible. In a statement on Facebook, a spokesperson for the farm wrote, This is a decision taken by the team and not by governing bodies however we are working closely with them as always. We would like to wish anyone that is poorly a speedy recovery. It appeared that people who commented on the post were not deterred from visiting in the future, however. 
Your hand washing facilities were better than I've seen on most farms and I guess it comes with the type of work you do. Can't be avoided but can only try to prevent it, one person wrote. Rest assured it will not stop us coming year after year. One visitor said two members of their family were ill, but added, I absolutely loved our experience and would defo consider visiting again as this could happen anywhere. To avoid catching cryptosporidium, the UKHSA advises, you should pay special attention to hygiene during farm visits, washing hands after any contact with animals, and eating only in designated areas. A spokesperson for UKHSA said, specialists from the UKHSA West Midlands are working with Worcestershire County Council following reports of a number of visitors becoming unwell with diarrhea and vomiting after visiting Gone Now Farm, Worcestershire. Samples have been taken and sent off for analysis, we are unable to confirm the cause of illness until we receive the results back from the laboratory. In Ukraine, Russian drones could have been targeted by a British military laser. A new British military laser could be used in Ukraine to shoot down Russian drones, the defense secretary has suggested. The Dragonfire weapon, which is expected to be ready for deployment by 2027 at the latest, could have huge ramifications for Kyiv's conflict against Russia, Grant Shapps said. New reforms aimed at speeding up procurement mean the laser, which was originally set to be rolled out in 2032, will now be operational five years earlier than planned, according to the Ministry of Defense. But Mr. Shapps said he would look to see if the pace can be increased further, in order for Ukrainians perhaps to get their hands on it. I've come down to speed up the production of the Dragonfire laser system because I think given that there's two big conflicts on, one sea-based, one in Europe, this could have huge ramifications to have a weapon capable particularly of taking down drones," Mr. Shapps said at the Porton Down Military Research Hub in Salisbury. And so what I want to do is speed up what would usually be a very lengthy development procurement process, possibly up to 10 years, based on my conversations this morning, to a much shorter time frame to get it deployed, potentially on ships, incoming drones, and potentially on land. Again, incoming drones, but it doesn't take much imagination to see how that could be helpful in Ukraine, for example. Laser-directed energy weapons, bulldoze, use an intense beam of light to cut through their target. The mod hopes the Dragonfire system will offer a low-cost alternative to missiles in shooting down attack drones and even mortars. It has been developed by defense firms MBDA, Leonardy and Kinetic and the Defense Science and Technology Laboratory. The new procurement model, coming into effect next week, is aimed at speeding up the process of getting cutting-edge military developments out onto the field. It's designed to not wait until we have this at 99.9% .9 perfection before it goes into the field, but get it to sort of 70% and then get it out there and then develop it from there. In a more dangerous world, our approach to procurement is shifting with it. We need to be more urgent, more critical and more global, Mr. Shapps said. Forever chemicals found in more than half of food and drink samples. The government should ban 25 pesticides which contain so-called forever chemicals, campaigners have said, as the potentially harmful toxins were found in more than half of the tested food and drinks available to Britons. PFA chemicals, toxins which take centuries to break down in the environment, were found in more than 3,300 samples tested by the UK government in 2022. As PFAs can accumulate in living organisms and have been linked to serious health conditions, campaign group Pan UK has called for the 25 PFA pesticides being used in the UK to be banned, including six classified as highly hazardous. Out of all the items tested, strawberries were found to be the worst affected as 95% of the 120 tested samples contained PFAs. The foods and drinks were tested for residues of around 401 pesticides, according to a report from the Environment Department's Advisory Committee on Pesticide Residues PREF. Peaches, cucumbers, apricots, and beans all saw at least 15% of samples containing PFAs, the analysis showed. The PREF report said that 56.4% of samples tested contained a residue of pesticides they were testing, but this was below the maximum residue level MRL, allowed in food by law. Meanwhile, 1.8% of the samples contained a pesticide residue above this legal level. 
The report said the UK's Health and Safety Executive HSA, conducts a risk assessment of all pesticide residues found in the testing program and takes further action if risks to health are identified. It is useful to note, even when a food contains a residue above the MRL, HSE rarely finds any likely risk to the health of the people who have eaten the food, it said. However, Pesticide Action Network UK, Pan UK, said MRLs do not guarantee the quantity of pesticide found in the food is safe. The organization also claimed there wasn't any consideration for the many other ways in which consumers can be exposed, such as plastic food packaging, drinking water and a wide range of household products. Pan UK, which analyzed the test results, found 61% of 109 grape samples contained PFAs, 56% of the 121 cherry samples, 42% of the 96 spinach samples, and 38% of the 96 tomato samples. Nick Mole, from Pan UK, said PFA pesticides are absolutely unnecessary for growing food, as he urged the government to ban the 25 currently in use. He said, given the growing body of evidence linking PFAs to serious diseases such as cancer, it is deeply worrying that UK consumers are being left with no choice but to ingest these chemicals, some of which may remain in their bodies long into the future. We urgently need to develop a better understanding of the health risks associated with ingesting these forever chemicals and do everything we can to exclude them from the food chain. The organization said ministers should also increase support for farmers to help them end their reliance on chemicals and adopt safer, more sustainable alternatives. Dr. Shubhi Sharma, from ChemTrust, which campaigns to protect humans and animals from harmful chemicals, called for a total ban on PFAs as she said they have now contaminated every single corner of the planet. A Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, DEFRA a spokesperson said in a response, we set strict limits on the pesticide residue levels in both food for consumers and feed for animals. These limits are set to protect public health and are set below the level considered to be safe for people to eat as well as applying to both food produced in the UK and those imported from other countries.